Monica was born in College Park, Georgia in 1980. Born Monica Denise Arnold, she lived with her mother Marilyn, a church singer and a customer service rep for Delta Airlines, and her father, MC Billy Arnold Jr., a mechanic. Three years later, her brother Montez was born. She also has three half-siblings. Her parents split when she was just four. Like most R&B singers, Monica performed in church. Her family attended the Jones Hill Chapel Methodist Church in Noonan, Georgia. After her parents divorced, she lived with her mother, who struggled financially as a single parent. Despite a modest beginning, Monica focused on her singing and tried to attend as many talent shows as possible. She became a local celebrity, winning over 20 singing competitions in her hometown. At age 10, she joined a 12-piece gospel choir, Charles Thompson and the Majestics. She was their youngest member. She then went on to attend the North Clayton High School, which was also attended by rapper Two Chains. Monica was discovered by music producer Dallas Austin at the age of 11. She was performing at the Centre Stage Auditorium, singing the Whitney Houston song, Greatest Love of All. He was blown away by her performance and decided to sign her on the spot, offering her a record deal with his own label, Rowdy Records, which was distributed through Arista Records at the time. Queen Latifah was Monica's first manager. Well, I uh, grew up, of course, singing gospel music and I ventured into secular music by way of R&B. And it's just a timeless type of music where when you hear certain songs, you can think about where you were and different things that were happening and what songs meant to you. Her debut album, Miss Thang, was released in 95 when she was only 14. Co-produced by Dallas, the album sold more than 3 million, going triple platinum. It resulted in three top 10 singles, including Don't Take It Personal, Before You Walk Out Of My Life, and Like This and Like That. Monica also became the youngest artist ever to have two consecutive number ones in the US Billboard Hot R&B Singles Chart. She went on to win a Billboard Music Award and was nominated in 96 for an American Music Award for Favourite Soul R&B New Artist. Brandy actually ended up winning the award. Monica eventually left Austin's independent label and went on to Avista Records, the same record company that signed Whitney Houston. Prince, Usher and TLC. She continued to have a good relationship with Dallas Austin, who went on to say she was the daughter he had never had. And she remained close to Queen Latifah, who she had always spoke highly of. We were in LA and she wanted to hear me sing in person. And it was just like this instant connection. So over the years as I've seen her do things and really start a lot of careers, but also like further hers in a way that you just would have never imagined when you look back and you're singing Ladies First and you're watching her rock all her little high hats and, you know, rep for the sisters. She's just always been one of the dopest artists around. But I think one of the keys to that, too, goes back to what we talked about, authenticity. One thing about Dana, she ain't going to be nobody but her. And if you don't like it, you got to deal with it. If you ever meet her, you will quickly understand that. <laughs> she had the opportunity to record a song for the movie Space Jam, which starred Michael Jordan and included other big name artists such as Michael Jackson. For You I Will was released in May 1998 and became her next top 10 hit. The following year, she worked with Brandy Norwood, who many considered to be her rival. They were usually compared to each other and pitted against one another. Stay tuned for more on their rivalry that may still be going on to this day. They recorded The Boy Is Mine which became one of her most successful songs to date. The song was featured on both of their second albums. The Boy Is Mine was the hit of the summer in 1998. It reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and spent 13 weeks there. They also won a Grammy for Best R&B Performance by a duo or group with vocal. It was a multi-platinum selling single 
and remains one of the top 20 most successful singles in the history of Billboard. Brandy was so excited to win, she ran to the stage and snatched a Grammy from the presenter. Meanwhile, Monica was still gracefully making her way onto the stage. They were only 17 and 15 at the time. Monica's album of the same name was produced by Jermaine Dupri, David Foster and Dallas Austin. It sold more than 3 million copies and was certified triple platinum. She had two number one hits from the album, The First Night and Angel of Mine. The album The Boy Is Mine was critically acclaimed and considered a mixture of hip-hop-esque Mary J Blige and the mature sound of Tony Braxton. The third single from the album was Right Here Waiting. The first night sampled Dinah Ross's Love Hangover. Angel of Mine was actually a cover of a song sung by the British female group Eternal. Monica was at the height of her career at this time and she was only in her late teens still. She began acting also. She starred in television shows Living Single, Felicity and Beverly Hills 91210. And she made her first film appearance in the MTV film Love Song. But just a year after enjoying the success of The Boy Is Mine, Monica's career slowed down due to major setbacks in her personal life. In the year of 2000, she was dating Jarvis Weems, a childhood friend who was believed to be a drug dealer. He was brought up, you know, in an area where people do whatever they have to to survive. Did he make choices that were illegal? Absolutely. Yeah. Drugs? Definitely. Violence? Probably. He kept me very sheltered from a lot of stuff that was going on, even though I would never pretend that I was not aware. Don't get me wrong. At the time, Jarvis, who was 24, was dealing with the sudden loss of his brother, who died tragically in a car accident. On one ill-fated day, he called Monica from the cemetery and told her to come and meet him there. When she arrived, Monica said he refused to unlock the car doors. Then he shot himself right in front of her. After more than an hour of talking, Jarvis abruptly rolled up the car window, turned away from Monica, and reached down. He grabs a gun. And what, puts it to his hand? Mm -hmm. One minute we're talking, and the next minute, it just totally blew my mind. I think the sad part is that I was prepared for a lot of things. Just not this. Just not this. When this happened, you automatically ran to your car and grabbed your gun. Mm -hmm. Why did you have a gun? I've always had one. I'm licensed to carry one. I don't have a felony record. <laughs> I've always had one. What were you trying to do? Get inside the car. The car was locked. I, my goal was to be near him. Monica blew out the window of the car and unlocked the door, determined still to save him. I made my way into that vehicle. I continued talking to him. I continued telling him that I loved him, God loved him, and it was going to be okay. When I asked him, did it hurt? You know, he tried to say something back, but I touched him, and I could still feel life. In the years that followed the tragedy, Monica lost the support of Jarvis's family. Being the only witness, they didn't accept her account of what had happened. Jarvis Weems' mother said, I don't believe my son killed himself. The bullet went in on the right side of his head. But he was left-handed. Why would he use the wrong hand to shoot himself? She was critical of the police too, saying, the cops just took her word for what happened. Now I wish my son had never met her. Monica took care of Jarvis's young daughter for a while following the suicide. She and her sister went on to live with their mother. Shortly after the death of her boyfriend, Monica lost her cousin and her best friend, Selena. 
who died from a brain aneurysm. She was just 23 years old and a devoted mother of two. Monica would go on to say, most people I love are either dead or in jail. For a while, it was one day at a time. I didn't eat, didn't sleep or drink. I wondered how I would ever heal. Speaking of jail, Monica dated Corey Miller, AKA C Murder, who is the brother of Master P. He is best known for his platinum selling album, Life After Death. It is believed they started dating in 1997. They split but remained close. In 2002, Corey was arrested in connection with the murder of a young fan, 16 year old Steve Thomas. Seven years later, he received a sentence of life in prison. He is now 47 and serving his time in Louisiana State Penitentiary. There were a lot of red flags surrounding C Murder's case. The jury initially reached deadlock and couldn't decide on a verdict, but the judge told them to go back and deliberate some more. They eventually came back with a 10-2 majority vote to convict Corey. But the judge felt that a couple of jury members were simply bowing to pressure. They came back with the same verdict. This all led many to question the fairness of Corey's trial and his family have always maintained his innocence and fought to have his conviction quashed. Monica has also defended Corey alongside the family. She was devastated by the conviction and unsuccessful appeals. His appeals were denied multiple times. Even as recently as last year, two key witnesses recanted their statements and admitted that they lied about Corey being the killer at the nightclub. They claimed police pressured them to identify him as the killer. Despite this, his request for a retrial or to have his conviction quashed was denied this year. C Murder was a huge support for Monica after the devastation of the suicide of Jarvis Weems. While this was going on, Monica was in the middle of recording her third album, All Lies On Me. Production of the album halted. It eventually was released in Japan, ahead of its American release date. But people began leaking the songs and bootlegging the album. It was doomed from the start and eventually shelved but it paved the way for her fourth album. After the Storm was released the following year in 2003, a year or so after these trials and tribulations. It was described as a more mature sound for Monica, who was still only 23 at the time. On the album is a song Monica wrote about the suicide of her boyfriend. She said the meaning of the song was not to physically die, but to make a conscious choice to really live her life. The track, You Should Have Known Better, is believed to be about her relationship with C Murder. Lyrics include, what makes you think that I would forget about you? Think about it. Who comes to see you? Every Saturday and Monday, I was on that receiver. It's me, your girl, your life, your world. Monica maintains his innocence, but denied that she ever got back with him. Monica showed great strength and courage during these difficult times. Speaking of her strength, Dallas Austin said, you see how she handles things and it kind of breaks your heart. The average person wouldn't have been able to take it without totally losing themselves. So Gone was the first single and gave Monica her first top 10 hit since Angel of Mine in 99. It reached number one in the R&B charts, you should have known better, reach number 19 on the Billboard Hot 100. After the storm, went to number 1 in 2003 on the official Billboard 200. It was her first and only number 1 album. It went on to sell more than a million copies. Missy Elliott was the executive producer on the album and other tracks were produced by Jermaine Dupri as well as the track Knock Knock, which was co-written by Kanye West. Meanwhile, Monica started a relationship with Atlanta rapper Rodney Rocco Hill. 
They broke up a couple of times, but eventually got back together and had a son, Rocco, in 2005. A couple of years later, they got engaged and welcomed their second child, a son they named Romelo Montez Hill, named after Monica's younger brother. They eventually broke up for good in 2010, after an on and off relationship for 10 years. They also briefly had a reality TV show together. There were rumours of cheating, but Monica insisted the breakup was amicable and they remained on good terms. Later that year, Monica met her now husband, Miami Heat player Shannon Brown. He appeared in a music video for Love All Over Me. Within the same year, after dating for just five months, they married in secret at their home, not even telling friends and family. The press didn't even know about it until early the following year and they had a second ceremony for friends and family in the summer of 2011. Monica gave birth to her third child and first daughter, Leia Shannon, in 2013. Part two is also available now. Click the link in the description box. What do you think was Monica's best album? Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up, press the bell, and subscribe for more videos.